we I'm going to re-show you guys the pinch pot so that everybody is clear on how you're going to use a pinch pot for the totem project. So I started this one right here. This is just a fresh one I just started today. But just remember, when you start, you're going to start with your two thumbs if see that. If you want to, if you have long fingernails, you can use this tool. I have them in the back. They're really meant for um, on the wheel. But if you have long fingernails and you're really having a hard time getting into the surface without digging your fingernails in, use the end of this tool and just the other palm of your hand, okay? Now, when you're doing this, remember how we did it before. I'm pinching with my thumb, pushing it out, right? And then my four fingers are supporting the outside so that I'm not totally cracking it all over the place. And I'm trying to get this to a half an inch thickness all the way around. What happens if you don't get it to a half inch thickness? You have like an inch and a half here and then a half inch here and three eighths there. It means that the three eighths is gonna dry really quick. That's gonna crack because the other stuff is still gonna be wet and it, it won't dry evenly and it'll crack all over the place and it'll be no good and you'll have to start again, okay? So the reason I'm asking you guys to do this is practically, you know, that's going to make more sense for you and we don't have to do the work again, right? Thank you. So we're going to keep going, right? And we're going to pinch and pinch and pinch until we're in the half inch phase. The other thing I want to say about this is you can see how this is curved on the outside, right? The inside has to reflect that shape. It can't be straight on the inside. It has to be the same shape okay on the outside that it is on the inside same thickness same shape right this is how we want to start this and then we're going to get to a, a phase where this is the second stage i'm making my little bird so i'm going to add the tail later and i'm going to carve in the wings but with my little bird i'm making sure that again the thickness is even even up through where the nose is Okay, if you have any shape, mine's a bird, you might do something else. I have a student from the last block who wants to do a football. Fantastic. A football is a more complicated shape. How would you do that? You might start by doing two pinch pots that create that kind of cone shape and then bring the two of those together. So there's lots of ways you can use this in construction of your totems, right? And then cut holes in the top and bottom as you finish it. The next part that you guys are going to want to do, once you get it shaped and the right thickness, is you're going to want to make sure to paddle. The paddle is like your BFF when it comes to this. It will smooth out all your fingerprints. It will make it look really nice. You want to not use the side that has the texture, I guess unless you want texture. That would be different, but um, you can do it either way. You want to go through all the different surfaces that you have. And if you have on the bottom like this, like this hole is still kind of big and I want to bring it in. Remember, I pinch these in. You guys are the boss of this clay. Move the clay where you want it to be. And then I also paddle around that area and it helps to bring that in and make it a little bit smaller. It makes it a little easier, okay? So there's that. So then we paddle. What, is, what do we do when we're trying to get some areas that are difficult to paddle? There's two things. You can use the smaller tools like this tiny little um, spoon and that can get into odd shapes. And you can use a sponge. So if you have a spot that you're like, oh, that's just not smoothing out with a paddle, you can try to use a sponge. Remember, what do we do with the sponges? What do we have to do? Now you can talk. Squeeze it out, right? You've got to keep it like, so it's not like dripping wet. It's just a tiny bit of moisture. And then that kind of helps to smooth out the surface of the clay. So you can use this for any shape that you want volumetric or whole. And then you can, at that point when this stiffens up, when this is a little bit closer to leather hard, which this one isn't quite, you can then use the whole cutter, which is this. But we're not going to do this, not even for like a couple of days. You've got to have it stiffer. It will make a nice clean cut. I'm not going to do the top of this yet because it's still not hard enough to do that, okay? So you wait to do the hole until it's nice and smooth. But once you do the hole, you want to make sure that you get inside this right here, on the inside of this, and smooth it out so there's no rough areas. You don't want later when you're working with it and trying to put it together and you put your hand in there or a finger in there 
and it's sharp and you'll cut yourself. That happens, okay? So we want to be careful with that. And you can also use it for other shapes like the skull. And again, the skull I did, I showed you guys this before, but again, it's very reflective. The outside shape and the inside are reflective. The inside shape doesn't have to be super neat, right? The surface doesn't have to be super neat, but it has to be the same. And I'm letting both this and my little birds stiffen up, and then I'm going to carve into them, okay? I have to get them a little bit stiffer. Remember when we, got, we did the... Um, little keychains and on the back I had you put your names and we used the tool that had the purple handle with the little ball at the end. That's what you carve in with. That's one of the tools that we'll be using. Okay. Any questions on this? All right. Cool. Thank you.